We have arrived, my friends. We have arrived at Holy Week, the week of all weeks, the week that we are going to spend every moment with Jesus Christ as he takes everything upon himself and he gives us his life in return. He's going to heal us, he's going to restore us, he's going to take on our sin, he's going to, he's going to bring us through every emotion we could possibly have this week, and it's going to be glorious. And I just want to invite you, if you can this week, to really make this week a special place, make it very sacred. If there's places where you can really kind of withdraw from just exterior noise, any noise that you can kind of turn off and just to, to really make this week a special journey with the Lord and just to be very attentive in, in the Nazareth of your own soul, so to speak, of the movements of what the Lord is going to invite you to. Because as we go through the gospels, we're going to just make, we're going literally going to make a journey with Jesus Christ into Jerusalem, into you know his his scourging, his crucifixion, you know, his resurrection. It's just going to be really beautiful. So I just want to invite you, if you can, to really set aside this week as a very special place. And just even to let people know that, to be like, okay, I'm just gonna get offline this week. I'm gonna really just pay attention to the Lord and we're going to encounter the woman who breaks open a liter of perfumed oil and just anoints Christ and the fragrance that fills the whole room. It is the fragrance of, of love poured out and how often the world looks at uh, what seems to be like a waste, right? A fragrant love poured out. Love poured out upon Christ is never wasted. So really what Jesus is inviting us to is to break open our own hearts and just to pour out over him just the oil of our love, the oil of our mercy, like the oil of the places where we need forgiveness, the oil of just all, all our whole hearts broken open before him. And that heart of ours becomes like an incense which rises up to heaven, this beautiful area of our life. We're also going to spend some time with Peter as he is going to learn some new things about himself. <laughs> He's going to experience like who he thinks he is and who he thinks Christ is. That paradigm is about to be shattered. And we're going to be able to look in our own hearts and kind of see what's happening within our own souls of the places in our life where we've all done that, where we've said to Jesus, I will never leave you. I will die with you. I will. And the Lord is just so kind and just his preparing Peter's heart for that of saying, Peter, really? Really? And just the look. As, as the rooster crows and Peter denies Christ for the third time and Jesus looks at him. And just the piercing of Peter's heart as he weeps bitterly is really the beginning of his own like ripe repentance. And looking at our own hearts and our own places, we're gonna look at moments of stillness, we're gonna have a reflection on this gift of the institution of the Holy Priesthood on Holy Thursday of the Last Supper and then we are going to gloriously enter into the vigil, into the darkness of Saturday night when Jesus rises from the dead. If you've never been to an Easter vigil mass, I would like to invite you just to go. And you know, they call it the mother of all vigils. It's, it's usually because it's long and it's really beautiful. It's glorious. It has every sensory experience you could possibly imagine from light and dark and the smell of incense and holy water and people coming into the church. And if you've never been to an Easter vigil mass, I would love to invite you especially to go this year. But one of my favorite parts of this entire Mass is actually begins before and when it begins outside in the blessing of the new Paschal candle and the Easter fire. The priest says this, Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all time belongs to him and all the ages. To him be glory and power through every age and forever, amen. And when the priest places those five grains of incense into the candle, that's what he's, this is what he's saying, by his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. After that, the priest takes that large white paschal candle and he lights it from this new fire. And as he does that, he prays this, may the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. And I'll say that again for you. May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. And amen, <laughs> and may it be so. And this is what this whole journey of Lent has been, my friends. It has been something far deeper than kind of a superficial practice of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. It's going to the root. It's so that by His holy and glorious wounds, He guards us and protects us and He heals us. It's by the light of His rising in glory that He dispels the darkness of our hearts and minds. It is Him being the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, that all time belongs to Him, that everything that's ever happened in our life, all of it fits into His hand, all of it fits into His heart. 
and all of it is waiting to be transformed by His love. That He never leaves us, that He never forsakes us. This is at the heart of who we are. This is our faith. This is the truth. That like we've said before, that our lives matter, that the direction that our lives are going matter. The decisions that we make matter. Every choice to forgive, every choice to be kind, every choice to be loving, these things matter. And this is what the Lord is doing in our life. He's, he's giving us the grace to live in His own blessed life. Like it says in the very first paragraph of the Catechism, that God, infinitely perfect and blessed in Himself, in a plan of sheer goodness, freely creates man to share in His own blessed life. And for this reason, at every time and at every place, God draws close to man and he invites him to, to, to respond to him in return. That it's, it's just through his sheer gift of love that God creates us. And that in his own sovereign majesty, even through our sin and the sins of others, if we allow him to come to this very place, he transforms it to something beautiful. And we experience his own resurrection in our lives in our families, in our communities, in our nation, and in our world. Love always has a reverberating effect. And this is what Restore has been all about, of allowing Jesus to come to every place and to restore us to union, to restore our identity, to restore our dignity, to restore the places that have been fragmented and isolated so that we do not live an unexamined life, that we allow our life to be seen totally and completely by the Lord who reveals us to ourselves in His glorious face. I want to invite you also, as we experience Holy Week and as we encounter Christ, the risen Lord in the garden, <laughs> the beautiful places where He's going to bring us to life and He's going to surprise us and He's going to, just to bring us into newness in places of our life. I'd like to invite you just to really sit, especially on Easter Sunday, and just to gather the grace of what the Lord has done for you this Lent. Because it doesn't just end here. This is really only the beginning. The Easter season is longer than the Lenten season. <laughs> and so what has God given you this Lent that He wants to ask you to continue to allow to unfold? Is it an area of forgiveness? Is it an area of your life where you've experienced deep wounds that He wants to continue to bring to wholeness and freedom? And that's the beautiful journey is because like we said that you know love never ends and because wherever love is healing is constantly occurring that it doesn't end on easter sunday it's only the beginning of something deeper something more beautiful and something more glorious and i just want to tell you what a delight it's been to be here with you on this journey all these weeks and as i was writing this material just looking over at myself i'm just writing it and i just had so many faces that came to my mind while i was writing it and I want you to know that I prayed for you very deeply, that you would already even now encounter the love of God, that he would open up your heart. And you know, the odds of you and I meeting, I meet many people, but the odds of you and I meeting this side of heaven, you know, may be kind of slim, but I do hope to meet you one day. I do hope to meet you one day on the other side of the veil <laughs> where love and beauty and healing and restoration and goodness flows for all eternity. Which needed is like C.S. Lewis, it's just like this book which keeps getting better, which every chapter is better than the one before, that we finally receive and continue to grow in forever, everything we've ever hoped for, everything we've ever imagined, and all the good we've longed for. Because everything on earth has just been a small foretaste into the love that never ends. And I look forward to that day. And I look forward to seeing you there. So God bless you, and thank you for coming on this journey. Have a wonderful Easter. Happy Easter.